In January, we saw the release of the animated adaptation of Crisis on Infinite Earths, the first part in what are going to be three movies that'll tell an adaptation of the classic DC Comics event, and, apparently, it'll also be used to finish the Tomorrowverse line of movies and reboot its animated universe once again. But nobody knows exactly what DC and Warner Bros. Animation will do next after Crisis on Infinite Earths. Maybe they'll set up a new animated universe of movies like the DC AMU or the Tomorrowverse. Maybe they'll strictly continue doing only Elseworld stories for animated films. But maybe there's another rumor circulating the internet that we will start to see animated movies set in the James Gunn Cinematic DCU sharing the same universe as the live action films we're gonna see and with the same live action actors providing the voices for their characters when they appear in animation which would be a pretty interesting idea this idea is supported by the fact that recently there were also reports that James Gunn will serve as executive producer for an animated movie based on the Jurassic League, an Elseworlds miniseries that reimagines the Justice League as prehistoric dinosaurs and it will reportedly be written by Brian Lynch, who's also written Minions and The Secret Life of Pets. And another thing that was recently revealed were some concept art made for a potential Batman Beyond movie with the same animation style as Spider-Verse. And it was shared by artist Yuki Demers, who's also worked on the Spider-Verse movies. I've already talked about this pitch before in a previous video, because there's been reports about this potential movie all the way back in 2019, so there's obviously a lot of potential for this idea. But I don't want to talk about this pitch too much, because I honestly think that most, if not all DC Comic fans, would absolutely love to see a Batman Beyond movie, whether it be in live action or animated. I'd honestly rather talk about some other ideas for potential animated films DC could make. So today, I wanted to name 5 characters who I believe would be much better to introduce them into the DCU in animation first, rather than live action and they'd be perfect for an animated movie. Oh! Beautiful De Niro! Moolah! Simoleons! do re -mi, Cabbage! <laughs> I've said it plenty of times in this channel before, but I genuinely believe that there are some comic book characters that simply work better in animation. Plastic Man is one of those fan-favorite, underrated characters that always steals the show whenever he's a part of an animated series, movie, or as a part of a team in many comic books. A shapeshifter with stretchy powers is always gonna look better in animation than in live action in my opinion. He's basically a living cartoon, and I always envisioned that Warner could easily make a The Mask style movie starring Plastic Man. It could feel really different from other modern superhero films. But if I'm being completely honest, my personal dream would be for them to make a Plastic Man animated movie instead. I think it would fit the character's style and personality more. And it'd be awesome to see a superhero that appears in most other movies in live action, but in his own solo movies, it's all animated. Almost as if that's how Plastic Man sees the world. And it would also be really interesting to see animated versions of the other heroes in the DCU. Like for example, Plastic Man usually appears alongside Batman. So imagine that Batman appears in a Plastic Man movie, and we get to see how the DCU Batman looks animated, with the same actor providing his voice. I think that a lot of people would be interested in that. I really do believe that there's a high chance of Plastic Man showing up in the DCU eventually. Back during the early 2000s, there were rumors of a planned movie by the Wachowskis, with Keanu Reeves potentially starring as Plastic Man. And in recent years, Kevin Smith has said that he pitched an animated movie to DC that was ultimately rejected. But I think he has a good chance of being included in the DCU. He's a part of the team The Terrifics, and one half of the group has already been casted with Metamorpho and Mr. Terrific having been confirmed to appear in Superman Legacy. And in 2023, James Gunn revealed on X that during the mid-2000s, he wanted to do a Plastic Man movie with Matthew Lillard portraying him, who was the actor that played Shaggy in the live-action Scooby-Doo movies written by James Gunn. So it really is entirely possible that Plastic Man shows up eventually. And personally, I hope that when he shows up, it's in an animated format. 
This is so cool! And all I had to do was say Shazam! Continuing with characters that I believe work better in animation, Shazam has kinda had some problems being translated into live action. While I personally believe that both of his DCEU movies were pretty good overall, they did have some issues, namely, a lot of people felt a disconnect in the portrayals of Asher Angel's Billy Batson and Zachary Levi's Shazam. During these movies, it sometimes could feel like Shazam was acting too childish and upbeat compared to how depressed and angsty Billy Batson was acting. Personally, I always found it somewhat understandable because Billy is going through a rough time and is dealing with really heavy issues, so it made some sense to me how the only thing that could cheer him up was getting superpowers. He was going through a situation that made him feel powerless and suddenly he goes through a life-changing experience that makes him feel powerful. It's kinda like getting drunk in the sense that for a moment Billy could forget about his problems and truly act uninhibited and allow himself to finally have fun. But still though, the movie definitely could have benefited from having more scenes of Shazam acting serious like Billy and more scenes of Billy acting a little goofy and having fun like when he's in his Shazam form. But more so than that, there was a discrepancy in how Shazam and Billy felt that went beyond the performances of each actor. Just visually, a lot of the appeal of the entire Shazam and Captain Marvel concept is that he's a little kid that's able to transform into an adult superhero. But when Billy is depicted as a teenager, it just doesn't feel the same. It's a lot less appealing in my opinion. And any live action movie that attempts to adapt Shazam is gonna have that problem of not being able to take too long to make any potential sequels. Because the actor that plays Billy Batson is gonna keep growing and aging to the point where it's not gonna make any sense why Billy transforms into another adult man when he already looks fully grown. Which is pretty much exactly what happened in Fury of the Gods. Asher Angel was already 16 years old when he played Billy Batson in the first Shazam movie, which was already too old for the role in my opinion. And 4 years passed in between the making of each movie. So when you watch Fury of the Gods, I can't deny, it does take you out of the movie seeing a young adult Billy Batson transform into an entirely different dude during the movie. However, you know what could easily solve this problem? Animation. Imagine that the next time that a new Shazam gets introduced into the DCU, it's in an animated movie. And then, later on when he reappears in another live action DCU movie, like say a Justice League or a Superman movie, the same voice actor that played Shazam in animation also plays him in live action. And during these live action appearances, you show him as little time as possible when he's Billy Batson. That way, Whenever a Billy Batson actor gets too old for the role, they could simply recast the child actor that's currently playing Billy Batson. But Shazam could always be played by the same person. It could feel a little weird to have a different voice coming out of Billy Batson if they recasted his child actor after a few movies. But I honestly think that this could work with some careful planning. Besides, I think that concepts like the Marvel Family, Monster Society of Evil, Mr. Tony and the Rock of Eternity are all elements from Shazam comics that work a lot better when translated into animation. And if Billy Batson got an animated movie with an animation style similar to the Spider-Verse movies or Mutant Mayhem, it'd be really cool in my opinion. <laughs> A big reason why I love seeing comic books get animated adaptations is that it gives fans a chance to see different comic book art styles get translated into animation. It gives me such an amazing feeling to see a comic strip art style like Peanuts get adapted so faithfully in a big budget animated movie, which is very good by the way, and you should see it if you haven't before. And in the case of superheroes, it's awesome to see stuff like the Spider-Verse films have a look that mimics a comic book art style so well. The mix of 2D and 3D animation, simulating printing errors on some scenes to play with the focus of a shot, and the use of the Kirby dots are just some examples of how they managed to achieve this and why those movies animation looks so amazing. 
And speaking of Jack Kirby, I've always thought that there should be more animated comic book adaptations that directly take inspiration from Jack Kirby's art style. It is so iconic and visually striking that it could give any comic book movie a unique identity and personality. And more specifically, I've always wanted to see an animated adaptation of Commandi, a comic book which Jack Kirby created for DC in the early 70s after they had failed to acquire the rights to create a comic book adaptation of the Planet of the Apes films and so Kirby was hired in order to envision a similar concept which led him to create the world of Commandi, one of the last human survivors on Earth after an apocalyptic disaster destroyed human civilization and most people leaving behind a devastated planet Earth which ended up being ruled by highly intelligent and evolved human animals. This is an awesome concept and comic book series that would be really entertaining to see get adapted in any medium, but I think that the best way to adapt Kamandi would be with an animated movie, but specifically because if Warner and DC were to try and make a live action Kamandi film, it would for sure get compared to Planet of the Apes and it would run the risk of being disregarded as simply being an uninspired ripoff despite how creative and imaginative the story really is. But if they were to make an animated movie instead, I think that a lot less people would compare it to Planet of the Apes and it would give Kamandi a more unique identity, especially if they leaned into the Jack Kirby influence. Besides, making a Kamandi movie set inside the DCU would give Warner the possibility to tease audiences on what will happen in the DCU in the distant future and it could potentially tie into whatever storyline is currently going on in the DCU movies set in present day. It would allow for a lot of story possibilities. My name is John and I only wish to speak with you. Even though I did personally enjoy most of the Tomorrowverse line of movies, I'm still excited for this next chapter of DC Animation, because just the possibility of the new future DC Animated movies being connected to and set inside the DCU means that they could be used to try and introduce certain key characters into the world, which will potentially tie into the larger DCU in the main live action films. Much like how the upcoming animated series Creature Commandos will do, since it will introduce Rick Flagg Sr., which ties the show to the Suicide Squad series, and we'll likely get to see these characters in live action on another DCU movie and later down the line. So besides characters like Shazam and Plastic Man, another awesome but underrated hero that I'd like to see get introduced in animation into the DCU is Martian Manhunter. He's another character that would actually benefit from being used in animation. Firstly, he has a lot of powers, like a lot. Basically all of Superman's powers and even more on top of that. So any live action project that includes him is gonna need a very high production budget and a lot of special effects. But animation would allow for more possibilities with a smaller budget while still being able to get fully creative with Martian Manhunter's powers and his world. Because it's not only just about the powers, a Martian Manhunter story would also be very sci-fi heavy as well. We'd probably get flashbacks set in Mars and the villain would also very likely have to be done with special effects. If for example it's someone like Malefic, Despero or Mongol. Besides, we all know that the chances of Martian Manhunter getting his own big budget live action movie are slim to none, but an animated movie could be a lot more likely, especially if the animated DCU projects continue to focus on introducing obscure characters like the Creature Commandos, and I personally think they can make a really cool detective story with influences from sci-fi, noir and horror centered around John Jones. A lot of origin stories have him spending years in disguise and blending in with human society on Earth and getting to know our civilization. Sometimes he spends years and decades living in disguise among us, so maybe we could actually get to see that backstory and it could serve as an opportunity for world building in the DCU since we could follow John Jones through the decades from his arrival on Earth, adapting to humanity, all until there's an inciting incident that makes him actively start using his powers. For example, they could set the story in the 1940s and have a classic noir mystery of John Jones living as a detective in Gotham City, secretly uncovering an alien conspiracy like white Martians living as 
society, infiltrating the government and posing as powerful people, with John's brother Malefic as the main villain, or maybe he has to investigate a secret cult that's being mind controlled by Despero into making cosmic rituals to open a portal so that he can come to earth and invade it. And a dark, moody, atmospheric story like that could really benefit from being made in animation. While I believe we can all agree that live action adaptations of comic books have the potential to be fantastic, it's still undeniable that most times there are some aspects that simply aren't or can't be translated from comics into live action. For example, one of the things I've always loved the most about comic books is how visually distinct they can be. Every comic book series has a different artist who has a personal style that make every character, world and story have a unique feeling. And that's something that tends to get lost with most live action adaptations. A comic book's visuals are crucial in setting the tone of a story and they can complement its themes. They are a very important element that tends to get lost in most adaptations. And there are some iconic stories that simply wouldn't work if the visuals aren't faithfully adapted. And I think most of y'all know where I'm going with this. Kingdom Come is one of DC Comics greatest stories of all time and one of the greatest Justice League stories specifically. Throughout this video I've mainly talked about underrated and obscure characters, but an animated movie with more famous and recognizable characters would obviously be more appealing to the general audience. I think that one of the reasons Into the Spider-Verse was as successful as it was, it's because it was an animated movie about one of the most famous heroes and characters of all time, who mainstream audiences are more accustomed to seeing him in live action whenever he appears in a movie. So to see a high budget movie where we get to see Spider-Man but in an animated form instead probably generated a lot of interest for general audiences. And I think that an adaptation of Kingdom Come could play into that. It would be an opportunity to see DC's biggest heroes in a completely new look for most people, since not only we would see them beautifully animated, we would also get to see alternate versions of how most people imagine characters like Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman. Given that Kingdom Come is an Elseworld story, set in a future where most of the Justice League has retired after a new generation of anti-heroes with more extreme methods emerged and the general public started supporting them, especially one new hero named Magog who killed the Joker after he had massacred the Daily Planet. This is the story that started the trope of the Joker killing Lois Lane, except Superman doesn't go mad in this universe. It's a lot more nuanced than that. Superman and most heroes realized that times were changing and that people's fear and desperation had made them shift their morals and allowed for a new type of hero to be the dominant force. And once our traditional heroes return, even their morals start to get compromised once characters get divided and start fighting amongst each other. It's a really layered story that serves as a deconstruction of the entire superhero genre and a meta commentary on the impact of the edgy and hardcore anti-heroes of 90s superhero comics. Of course, I cannot understate how absolutely gorgeous Alex Ross's art is. He's one of the greatest comic book artists of all time and his work absolutely deserves to be faithfully adapted onto the big screen with a big budget animated movie. It would be extremely disappointing if Warner simply made a loosely inspired adaptation of Kingdom Come because of course they could always make a story about a potential dystopian future for the DCU that takes some light inspiration from Kingdom Come, but that would be lame in my opinion, really lame. What I and most people would love to see is simply a straight up adaptation of Kingdom Come as an Elseworlds movie and clearly in order to adapt Alex Ross's hyper realist art style the movie needs to have a high budget. Warner Bros. Animation and DC have considered making a direct-to-video animated adaptation before. Bruce Timm himself has talked about it in the past, but he's even admitted that a faithful adaptation of the story is quote-unquote not within the scope of what we can do with the direct-to-video animated movies. That's why James Gunn 
publicly stating that he would like to make more animated works set in the DCU opens the door to a lot of possibilities and it's the perfect opportunity to finally see this happen. If the Spider-Verse movies are possible, then a faithful adaptation of Kingdom Come is also possible. And it honestly feels like this is exactly the kind of movie that DC and superhero films in general need right now. Superhero fatigue in cinema is kinda undeniable at this point, and we've seen plenty of movies come out lately that have bombed at the box office. Some were simply bad, and it's no surprise they underperformed, but a lot of recent superhero films that have also bombed were admittedly good movies. The thing is though, I don't think that a superhero movie just being good is enough for it to be successful nowadays. For a blockbuster in general to truly be impactful, they still need to be made with thought, care and offer something creative and innovative, something that audiences haven't seen before. And I really believe that if they were to do a Kingdom Come movie done right, with respect and care, we could potentially see the greatest DC movie of all time. But those are only my thoughts. I'm really excited about the possibility of seeing animated series and movies set in the same universe as the live action movies. And I'm actually really excited for Creature Commandos because of this. The DCU could really take advantage of this. But what do you think? What DC character or story would you like to see get adapted into an animated movie? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for watching.